So partial fractions is a topic from single maths, um, but in further maths we um, take it, we do it, take it a little bit further, and we use it for some more integration. The thing that we introduce is what happens when one of your brackets will not factorize. So if it's a quadratic that won't factorize, you can still do partial fractions with it, but notice that your denominator must now have a, a linear factor. Okay, a numerator, so it must have a linear factor. Okay. So like in this example, you've got x squared plus 1 on the bottom, which won't factorize. You can still split this up into a fraction of x squared plus 1 on the bottom, but the top has to say b x plus c instead. It works exactly the same way as before. So we're going to use this to set up our identity. So we're going to get this from making these um, fractions on the right-hand side have a common denominator of x plus 1, x squared plus 1. So the a gets times by x squared plus 1, and your b x plus c gets times by x plus 1. You can choose values for x to substitute into work out some of these coefficients. So if we pick x equals minus 1, that will get rid of the x plus 1 bracket, and we can work out a. Substitute this into the left-hand side, so that will give us 6. Substitute it into the right-hand side, you will get 2a plus 0. And that tells you that in this case, a is 3. Now, there's no more x values that will make any brackets equal to 0. So I'm going to choose x equals 0 this time as a simple one. So the left hand side is equal to minus 1. The right hand side we get a, uh, b disappears, and we get plus c as well. If a is 3, uh, that tells us that c is minus 4. Finally, to work out b, you could pick another value for x and substitute it in. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the x squared terms and equate the coefficient. So if I look at the x squared term on the left, that's just 5. On the right, I'm going to get x squared terms from doing ax squared, and I'm going to get an x squared term from doing bx times x. And that's it, there's no x squared terms involved in c. If I know a is 3, I can work out now that b must be equal to 2. And then you can write out your partial fractions at the end with your coefficients in 5x minus 2x plus 1. Is equal to a is 3 over x plus 1 plus 2x minus 4 over x squared plus 1. Pause the video, try the u try, and I will reveal the answer so you can unpause it and check your answer. So exactly the same thing for this one. This time we substitute three values in, but you could equate the coefficients of the x squared again. Um, we should get a is 2, c is minus 1, and b is 3. Next one, we're expressing this in partial fractions. We've got to come up with this partial fractions ourselves on this one. First off, I've got a repeated linear factor. So remember, I need to write that as a over one of these brackets plus b over the bracket squared. And then I've got a quadratic factor that won't factorize, so I need to put a linear thing on the top. So cx plus b on the top. Go to the identity, so a needs times by one more x minus one and then an x squared plus one to make the denominator the same. B just needs times by an x squared plus one, because it's already got x minus one squared. And cx plus b needs times by an x minus one squared. I'm going to pick a value for x and make some of these brackets zero. So I'm going to pick x is one, x minus one ends up going to zero. So on the left hand side, I'll get two. The a disappears, and cx plus b disappears, and I just get left with b. And if I sub one in, I get two b. So b is one. Next, I'm going to pick x is zero. So sub that in, I'll get. Um, minus a plus b, c will disappear, and I get plus d as well. We know that b is 1, so um, I'm going to um, turn this into a minus d equals 1 as one of our equations. So taking the a and the d across and leaving the b as 1. Now we can keep some of the x values in, or I can start equating some coefficients. So let's look at the x cubed coefficient first. 
2 on the left hand side, then I'm going to get x cubed terms from doing a times x times x squared. I'm not going to get one from b, and I'm going to get one from c times x times x squared. Looking at the x squared terms, so there's no x squared terms on the left hand side, I'm going to get a minus ax squared, I'm doing a times minus 1 times x squared. I'm going to get a bx squared. I'm going to get a cx squared, 2cx squared from expanding that out. So doing cx times 2x minus 2x, sorry. And I'm going to get an x squared from doing d times x squared. We've got b is 1. I'm going to take everything across. So a plus 2c minus d. Here, I've got three simultaneous equations for three unknowns. You can solve these in your calculator or you can solve them by hand, it's not too bad. So I'm going to rearrange um, what's called in equations one, two, and three. So if I rearrange equation one to make D the subject, and I rearrange equation two to make C the subject, I can sub these into equation three to get an equation just in terms of A. So I'll get A plus two times two minus A. Minus a minus one. If I expand this out, so that's a plus four minus two a plus a plus one equals one. Uh, this gives me um, five minus two a plus one. So I get two a plus four and a equals two. Sub that in to work out c. So c is two minus a, so that gives you c is zero. And so that into work out D, and you get um, A is 2, so D is 1. Obviously, you can write it all out at the end, but in the interest of space, I'm not going to. Finally, for example, 3, this puts this together with our integration. So to be able to integrate this expression here, I need to um, split this up into partial fractions. I'm going to split this up into something over x plus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 3. Come up with your identities. 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 is equal to a times x squared plus 3 plus bx plus c times x plus 1. Pick a value for x to sub in. So if I sub in minus 1, is equal to 4a and the second one disappears. So I just get a is 1. Then if I pick a is, uh, x is 0, that will give me 3a on the right hand side. Uh, b disappears and I'll get plus c. If a is 1, take that across, you get c is 2. And finally, I'm going to compare my x squared coefficients to work out b. So on the left hand side, I get 2. On the right hand side, I get ax squared and I get bx squared. A we know is 1, which tells us that b is also 1. So our integral becomes 1 over x plus 1 plus x plus 2 over x squared plus 3. Now integrating 1 over x squared plus 1 is um, a single math integration. Integrating this fraction, I'm going to put it into two separate fractions because there's different rules for integrating each of these. First off, integrating 1 over x plus 1 just integrates ln x plus 1. There's a number of the x to worry about. For the second one, if it's another ln, because I recognise that the top is the bottom differentiated, give or take a factor of 2. So if I times the top by 2 to make it correct, I also need to times it by half to kind of cancel one out. And then this will just be ln half. So half ln x squared plus 2. Finally, I look at this one and I recognise that this is one of the standard results from um, the last lesson. So you can go back and have a look at the standard results. We want one with x squared plus something on the bottom, which we're looking at the arc tangent. We've got a squared is 3, so a is root 3. So this is 1 over root 3 and x over root 3. So 
was the two on the outside, and then it'll be two times one over root three tan x over root two with a plus. Have we got the final question for you? So pause the video and I will reveal the answer in a while. So from doing your partial fractions, you should end up with a 2, a 1 over x plus 2, and an x minus 5 over x over plus 4. And then from doing the integration, 2 integrates to 2x, 1 over x plus 2 integrates to ln x plus 2. Split that last fraction up and give you a half ln x squared plus 4. And the final one is an arc tan 1. So you get 5 over 2 arc tan x over 2. Sub your limits in and you should get that final answer.